My name is Alicia Skye. I'm executive producing the show with Gary, and it's a huge blessing. The pilot is completely written, and we have chosen scenes from the pilot that we feel would be great to showcase in the trailer, and we are showing all three time periods that are covered in the book. And now I'm going to pass it to Gary, and he's going to chat a little mm. bit about the difference between the books and the show and, and the format that you guys can expect. I think this show is going to surprise a lot of people. There are differences between the books and uh, the show. When it comes to the books, of course, uh, they're conversations. The difference with the show is that we can show everything. It's going to be obviously very visual, and in that sense, it'll be unique. There will also be things that are in the show that are not in the books. That's because uh, the show is inspired. Everything that you read in the books are literally true. There are things that really happened to me. And that's also true, I believe, with the TV series. It's just that because the series is inspired, you will be seeing kind of an adaptation, you know, where uh, things that happened that, that were not actually said in the books are presented uh, in the TV series. These things are based on guidance, uh, memories that I have from different lifetimes, visions that I have. For example, uh, there's this place that I call the in-between zone where I'm just dozing off to sleep at night. So I'm not quite awake and I'm not quite asleep and there's that in-between zone where I see visions. And sometimes it's like actually watching uh, scenes from past lives and future lives, almost like watching a movie with sound. And Alicia also has inspired ideas. We write together. We wrote the, uh, the pilot script together, which was a long process. I knew absolutely uh, nothing about writing for television. I didn't know that it was a different format. I had learned from scratch, and Alicia is a big help there. Just knowing how to do it right is very important. And uh, she did know, and she's worked on a lot of television projects, web series, and things like that. So it's good to have someone, you know, who actually knew what she was doing. When you do uh, read the third book, Love Has Forgotten No One, you're going to recognize some of the ideas that are in the TV show that are in the book. Uh, the third book and the TV series kind of coincided. And you'll also see uh, some of the ideas for 2,000 years ago, the time of uh, Thomas and Jesus. Then you get Cahokia 1,000 years ago. You'll see some of these ideas, even Chicago, 100 years from now, art and purses final lifetime. It's kind of like a hologram, you know, it all fits together. We'll be starting out with four major time periods, but I can see that going to eight major time periods eventually. We also wrote a treatment for the series, which is kind of like an outline that we have for uh, seven years. We know that we could run for uh, seven years with this thing because just one idea on one page of one of the books could be a whole episode. You could expand it. And once again, I believe that the things that we'll be presenting in this show are true. We are not going to uh, be giving you the religious picture that has been given to us by Christianity. Jesus and his followers were not these apocalyptic uh, religious uh, suffering figures that we've been given. Uh, Jesus was a wisdom teacher. He was enlightened. He was happy. His followers were happy. They knew how to laugh. They knew how to have a good time. They were normal people with normal problems. And the only difference was that Jesus taught people how to look at things differently. And Thomas was trying to look at things differently, along with Thaddeus, who are, who are two of the major characters from uh, that time. And uh, then you got the time of Cahokia, the great son, you know, he's the great American uh, Indian teacher. And he actually taught some of the, uh, the Ten Commandments long before there was any Bible uh, to get them from, because he was inspired. That's going to be, I think, a very authentic presentation of what it was like to be in Cahokia. This time period could be any time from my lifetime, from 1951 on. So we're wide open there uh, when it comes to that. Eventually, it could even include some of my life in uh, California here with Cindy. So, uh, you know, we've got that. We've got 100 years from now in Chicago. Chicago will look totally different uh, 100 years from now. It's going to be a wild trip because all these characters are connected. They're, they are all kind of like part of what the Course would call an interlocking chain of forgiveness. And a lot of the lessons that I have to learn in this lifetime and uh, in the next one are kind of like variations, but they're the same lessons that we were given 2,000 years ago. The Course says the trials are but lessons presented once again, so that where you made a faulty choice before, now you can make a better one. 
and thus escape all the pain that your previous decision has brought to you. So if you don't choose to actually learn a forgiveness lesson now, you're going to get another chance. And you're going to keep getting chances to forgive that same kind of thing. It may appear to be a little bit different because the form may be a little bit different, but the meaning will be the same. So that's why I tell people, look, don't wait until your next lifetime to practice forgiveness. You know, don't, don't wait until next year. Do it now. And take advantage of your opportunities. And, and if you do, you're going to get through this thing a lot faster. And that also will be one of the themes of the show. You know, I get more excited about it all the time. It's fun to have, you know, something new, something different. And we're not going to be hitting people over the head, as I said in the video. We're not going to be, you know, kind of like cramming this down people's throats. But we are going to be presenting ideas. You know, they'll be there for people if they want to take them and run with it. Uh, well, that's their decision. And uh, in order to do that, we have to be consistent. If we uh, weren't consistent to the thought system, then it would be as if uh, Star Trek violated the prime directive. <laughs> you know, they're not supposed to interfere with uh, the development of a civilization. Well, uh, if the show didn't do that, if the show all of a sudden violated the prime directive, nobody would take it seriously anymore. You know, because they would say, look, they can't even stick to their own rules. And uh, so we want to, you know, stick to the message, stay on message. We're even going to quote from A Course in Miracles occasionally. And usually an episode is going to begin with me narrating a quotation from the Course. You'll notice when we finally do the pilot episode that the first quotation will, will be also the very first quotation that was used in The Disappearance of the Universe, which I didn't understand at first. And maybe nobody will, will understand this quotation at first, but it does say that these teachers of teachers can appear, that their images will appear. So, uh, you know, the Course itself is saying that the appearances of art in Persa could happen, even though there will always be skeptics. I stand by the things that the TV series uh, is going to say, so, and you're going to start to see how these lifetimes are connected, how the characters uh, are all connected to each other in, in different lifetimes. Now, that of course brings up uh, the subject of reincarnation. We're calling this a reincarnation mystery because at first you'll know who some of these people are and how they're connected, but there's going to be other people where you won't know at first. You know, you'll see how these trials that are lessons presented again are all connected. And uh, one advantage that we have here is that a lot of uh, movies and TV series nowadays are being based on books. Uh, these uh, companies, uh, networks, they like the idea of something being based on books because you have source material. You've already demonstrated that the ideas work with people. I think that'll help us. Even though uh, the show is very controversial, I think it will be. Controversy is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, controversy can be a very good thing. I remember when the movie uh, Life of Brian came out, Monty Python's uh, Life of Brian, the Catholic Church officially protested against the movie and told people to not go see it. And without realizing it, all that they really did was publicize the movie. You know, they just gave it free publicity, and many more people saw that movie than would have if the Catholic Church had simply said nothing. You know, so I think that there are advantages uh, that can go to a network from doing a show like this. There's a show on HBO that uh, a lot of people like called Game of Thrones. And uh, that's the kind of like production value that uh, we have to have. Uh, we're not going to be as violent as Game of Thrones. But uh, there will be violence and there will be sex because that's life. You know, and, and this is going to be uh, very true to life. You know, we're going to be saying things that have never been said on television. And I really mean that. I'm not just blowing smoke here. We're going to be saying things that uh, literally have never been said. It's going to take a courageous network to do this which is why a subscription-based network may be the most likely possibility. That's not guaranteed, but it's uh, the most likely. But if you can get uh, four million, you can stay on the air. And I think that it's possible for us to do that. When we go to our pitch meetings, we're, we're really going to be showing this possibility just based on this really being an untapped genre that we're creating. You know, it's a, it's a reincarnation type of mystery. And if you look at just the new age book sales alone, you know, whether it's physical printed books or Kindles, and then you add in workshops and, and radio shows and the people that tune in to see people like Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra and, you know, everyone that's kind of in this world of creating healing through whatever form of spirituality they have. And when we just show them, you know, the numbers alone of Gary's numbers, here's Marianne Williamson, you know, and then you add people like Oprah. 
it's bigger than any genre of television that's out there now. It's not going to be a preachy show. It's going to be entertaining. Uh, it's going to be funny, like the books. I think that what's going to happen is, if, if it can find its audience, then we could run for a while. You know, I, I would be like a little kid if we, <laughs> if we got this show. You know, I, I would actually show up to work early. And uh, I'm not a morning person, by the way. But, you know, if I had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do this, I would. You know, Alicia, she's like a dynamo. You know, she has so much energy. Uh, and it's really her energy that is getting this going. Because I sit around thinking <laughs> about things. And she's, <laughs> she, she does things. You know, so uh, I think that, uh, you know, we're a good team because, you know, we both know what we want. Uh, we both know uh, what the vision for this show is. And we're going to do everything we can uh, to make it happen. And we're grateful to you. If this happens, then... Uh, you know, we're going to have to manage our time. Time is more important than money sometimes. You know, my experience in my life has been that whenever I had plenty of time on my hands, I didn't have any money. And whenever I had money, I didn't have any time. You know, so that's just the, the catch-22 of the whole thing. I'm not really ever planning on retiring or anything like that. I think I'll always go out at least, you know, part of the time you know, and speak about the course and introduce my books when it comes out in a new language. We're up to like 22 languages now uh, with mainland China. And hopefully we'll go there uh, next year. We're getting ready to wrap up here. So I just wanted to also mention Cindy's involvement too, because I think people have been curious about that in the show. And Cindy's going to be uh, directing all of our music. She's been amazing. You know, sometimes Gary and I will be sitting at the computer and we can't think of the right term or the right thing. And, and then we go to Cindy and it's just so clear and she's just so excited and so passionate about this project and has been incredibly helpful a lot of times in the writing process. She's been a, gosh, just a valuable resource creatively as well as just her amazing energy and positive spirit all the time. You know, she's just such a cheerleader for the show and, and I love her so much. And uh, I just want to also thank Gary for saying all the kind and nice things that he said about me. And when Gary asked me to write and produce this show with him, I. I felt like I won the lottery, <laughs> which which is funny because there's no money right now. <laughs> that doesn't matter, you know. When you're when you're really doing the type of work that you know you're here to do, those hours go by and it's just fun. It's fun and it's magic and it's almost like an out of body experience. It just feels like oh, I'm I'm playing producer, you know, because it's just such a blessing. I heard George Lucas say that if you start working at seven o'clock in the morning, and twelve hours later you're still working and you forgot to eat because you lost track of the time, then you'll know that you found the right job. I, I felt about uh, the books that, you know, even though I, I take a long time sometimes to do things, they are the books that they were meant to be. They are the, the books that I wanted them to be. And I think it's going to be the same with the show. I think it's going to be uh, the kind of show that we want it to be. And if we can stay true to that, you know, and stay true to the message, stay true to our vision, then uh, I think that it's going to be something that we're always going to be really happy that we got to be a part of. So thank you guys so much. And keep checking in on the Facebook page and just our sincere gratitude. We love you guys. Yes. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, everybody.